Okay, we'll look at friction in this video. Uh, friction, uh, we're looking at friction along with our Newton's laws. So friction is defined as a force which always acts against the, for the direction of motion or intended motion on a rough surface. On a perfectly smooth surface, there is no friction. Friction can be variable in size up to its maximum value, but it will only be large enough to prevent motion. I like to think of friction as a lazy force, so it does as little as it can to prevent motion taking place. Okay, so it always acts at, against the direction of motion. So if I was moving something to the right, friction would be acting to the left. If I changed and then I was moving a thing to the left, then friction would be acting to the right. So it always acts against the direction of motion. Uh, at the point of slipping, the friction is at its maximum possible value. Now we're going to go into a wee bit of detail, which we don't really need at this level of GCSE further mass. Uh, you will see this more at GCSE or sorry, at A-level mathematics, uh, but as this is what's called the coefficient of friction. So your F max is the maximum value of friction you can have is equal to mu times R, where mu is what is called the coefficient of friction. Now mu is dependent on the two surfaces which are involved. So the surface that the object is sitting on and then the surface of the object, if you can imagine. So if you had a, a block of wood on a bit of ice, there would be a certain coefficient of friction, but if then if you change that block of wood to uh, a brick, so if you had a brick and a bit of ice, uh, there would be a different coefficient of friction. Okay, well we don't really need to know about this at the minute. In our questions, the frictional force will be given to you, uh, or it will be, uh, or be, you'll be told a wee bit more information about it. Okay, so we're going to look at a wee example here. It says in this example, a 10 kilogram, 10 kilogram body is at rest on a rough horizontal surface. A forward force of x newtons is applied. State the friction force and describe the motion that can take place, if any, given that the maximum value of friction is 11 newtons. Okay, right. So, very important. The maximum value that friction can be is 11 newtons. So that's a maximum value of friction is 11 newtons in this particular example. Now, I... So if you can imagine in part A, if you can imagine in part A, I'm just going to write that down, F max, F subscript max is equal to 11 newtons. In part A, you've got a 5 newton force. So if you imagine here, this was just, uh, X was a 5 newton force. If friction acted at its maximum, what would happen would be that the body would accelerate this way. And that's obviously nonsense. So you don't come along and, and pull on something going to the right. And it also it all of a sudden starts accelerating the other direction. So friction then in this case just has to act at five newtons to prevent any motion taking place. Remember, friction is a lazy force, so it does as little as it can to prevent motion. So in part A, just say if x is equal to five newtons, then f is equal to also equal to five newtons. Okay. For part B. Similar sort of question, uh, it's say if x is equal to 10, then we have to think what happens then if x is equal to 10. So again, 10 is less than your maximum value of friction. So uh, it, friction could keep going up, so friction can still act at 10 uh, and per, still prevent a motion. So that is all that's going to happen. So you've got the first one, f is equal to 5, friction is equal to 5, second one, friction is equal to 10. For part C, this is where it gets a bit interesting. You've got 11 is your pulling force. So if X is equal to 11 newtons, then your friction is equal to 11 newtons. Now, this is very interesting then what is happening. So we are basically on the point of moving. So friction is maxed out. So that's as big as friction can go. So if this value here, increased any, so say it went up to 11.1 newtons, then there would be an overall resultant force and the body would start to move. So we are on, when we put a wee asterisk in and just say, we are on the point of moving. So if the X force increased by the tiniest wee amount, this, bo this body, this object would start to move. Okay, part D, <clears throat> part D, your X is equal to 15. And we're just gonna, I think I'm gonna do a new diagram for this one, just to show you what's going on. So your X is equal to 15. So let's just do a diagram. 
x equals 15. Your frictional force then, that's your F, is all is going to be equal to 11. It's a maximum. So, and we also have a, a body. And what was the mass of this body? It was 10 kilograms. I'm going to add that in. Uh, 10 kilograms. Uh, so we'll just say if x equals 15, f is equal to 11. So what we're going to do is resolve horizontally because there's going to be some sort of acceleration. We want to find out the acceleration. So we're going to resolve horizontally. We're going to use force equals ma. Don't say f equals ma because there's an f involved in the question here. So your pulling force is your x, which is 15, minus your f, which is 11, and that's equal to 10a. So that's going to be 4 is equal to 10a. And a wee bit of working out, you're going to get your a is equal to 0.4, sorry, 0.4 meters per second squared. And that's it. So to sum up, friction always acts against the direction of motion, always opposes the direction of motion, and always... And it is a lazy force, so it does as little as it can to prevent motion. And also it has a maximum value, so there's a maximum friction can be. And then if your resultant for your pulling force is bigger than your exceeds your frictional force, then acceleration will take place.